We're now recording. So hi, everyone. And thank you, Sam, for that nice introduction. And thank you, Maggie, for connecting us. Maggie and I have been uh, crisscrossing our lives since like 04 um, in lots of different ways that I could talk a long way about. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to do that funny screen share pause with my voice while I do so. OK. So I'm going to be sharing some links in chat as I go. Can I just get a thumbs up from someone that you can see my screen? Awesome. Thank you so much, Joshua. OK, so this is me. And today we're going to do, um, like we said a second ago, some low stakes drafting of emoji proposals with some context and games along the way. And I think we can do this in an hour. The last time I did it, it was an hour and a half. We'll see how we do. It'll be the lightning round. OK, so like we heard in our introduction, um, these proposals um, that for emoji go to Unicode, anybody can submit an emoji proposal to Unicode. Like you can download the template right now from the Unicode website, fill it out and submit it. Um, but I'm part of a group called Emoji Nation that, along with all of these other organizations and more, um, are part of the emoji voting body of Unicode. Um, so that includes also like special characters for language keyboards. Um, really what they're voting on, though, is the emojis that we know on our emoji keyboard. And they pay a ton of money to have these voting rights. There's certain levels of voting rights, and I don't exactly know how those work, but I do know that if you look in the right corner here, Emoji Nation is a dues paying member, and they um, have a website, which I'll show you in a little bit, where you just sign up for a Slack channel, access to an Airtable, and it's like community support for making emoji. You can write one yourself. You can write one with collaborators. I've made some friends like all over the world by doing these proposals in shared Google Docs, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but like the biggest thing that Emoji Nation is about is taking back some of the power from those organizations, because um, like SAP and like Facebook um, shouldn't be deciding like right what skin tone colors are getting into the emoji keyboard. It should really be about self representation so that people can kind of communicate without language right it's really their mission is to kind of increase diversity for emojis. So there is actually is an emoji movie and we're just going to spend like two or three minutes watching the trailer for it and I think. <clears throat> now freely available on YouTube, on Hulu or YouTube. And so if you're interested later, um, you can go watch the whole thing. So I'm gonna switch over to YouTube and make my screen big. Can you still see this? Awesome. Let's make sure my connection's okay. My daughter, there we go. it would be nice to be able to send an emoji that looks like me. I say, oh really? What is an emoji? for communication with friends. It's a huge part to the point that it's kind of scary. I thought the bottom of my email is a palm tree sometimes. Just alive in the mood. I like the poop one. <laughs> if people communicate through emoji, what is on the emoji keyboard therefore kind of defines their world. Anyone can submit an emoji proposal. Where do you draw the line? We are campaigning for a parrot emoji. The Unicode Consortium, there is an actual organization that I could contact. It's really a new emerging language. It shouldn't be controlled by some committee in San Jose, California. It's a bunch of old work guys, basically. I'm stepping in a pile of poo emoji here. There are trillions of these sent by way of text messaging all over the world. And they were all Caucasian. There are four emojis to represent the mailbox. Why on earth isn't there one to represent the half a billion Muslims that wear the headscarf? Nos falta encontrar cosas de nuestra cultura. Y me parecía que teníamos que ir por el mate. Good luck, we'll let you know. Que le den oportunidad a otros emojis que sean más sentir popular. It's a way of being engaged emotionally in a positive way. Getting a global emoji could go some way to saying, it's OK, I can talk about this. This isn't the most embarrassing thing in the world. This is a huge.
huge opportunity to represent everybody. Oh. Whenever you have the chance for diversity, you should definitely take it. Because at the end of the day, it will only promote tolerance and acceptance. Good. Thank you! Okay, so um, in this movie, um, if you noticed, the first person who's interviewed is an Asian woman. Her name is Jennifer A. Lee. She also um, was, I think, the producer of this movie called Searching for General So, which is also fantastic, and I recommend it. But she's really kind of the organizing person behind Emoji Nation, and she's so, so awesome, and she's like an active part of the group. Um, so I've got to give some credit to her, because this is all kind of her work over the past, I don't know, dozen or so years. It's been a while. Um, so, right, kind of the crux of it is, right, what do these corporations know about me? Probably a lot, <laughs> but let's take some power back and let's draft some emoji. And I think I saw in chat, someone said, right, like there's a there are a ton of mailbox emojis. I don't think there needs to be that many mailbox emojis. So if you're able to right now, like if you're on a desktop um, and you can enable Zoom annotation, I've got some screenshots here. If you haven't done it before, you go to options, select annotate, and then pick stamp because it's I think it's just the easiest for what we're about to do. And then whichever you know stamp icon speaks to you, maybe the heart or the star, a question mark's fine. Um, because we're gonna do a little bit of um crowdsourcing to kind of see how the folks that we have here um might prefer emojis one over the other, getting to kind of this idea of emoji representation and use. So if I could just get a couple of thumbs up once you've got your emojis or your annotations on, or if you could click around, awesome. I see some clicking, some hearts, some stars. Great. I'm seeing a bunch. All right, here we go. So here's what we're going to do. Your emoji representation. Let me just, oops, I do not want to open Zotero right now. I'm sorry, technical difficulties for where my bar is. Hopefully your annotations are still on if you just want to double check. Okay. It has been a minute. So Taro is my enemy right now. <laughs> I got too low on my keyboard. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. So when you're happy, which emoji would you use? We've got smiling face on the left and face with tears of joy on the right. So all of these emoji and all of the descriptions, including when they were released and what year, which emoji set are all from this source called Emojipedia, which is how I get copy and paste of emojis on my own keyboard. So it looks like we've got smiling face, which is winning. Um, I think that's pretty much what I use because I heard recently that um, the face with tears of joy was like a millennial thing and I'm a millennial and I didn't want to out myself too much. Uh, Kelly, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah. um, there are a couple people who were having trouble uh, enabling oh. annotations. Yeah. Would you be able to just show show that slide again? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, that totally messes everything absolutely up. Absolutely slow show that slide. That's no problem at all. Here we go. I don't know if it shows on my screen, which is why I have the screenshots. So for those of you who are looking for it, you should see up at the top of your mm -hmm. screen, it says you are viewing Kelly Blanchett, she, her screen. Mm -hmm. And then view options is next to that. If you click on that, then you'll see exactly what um, what Kelly has on this on this slide. Yeah, it's usually at the top of your screen in Zoom, um, mm -hmm. view options, and then annotate. And then you're moving to stamp, like Jenny said, but yep, every, I see everyone doing it. Everyone's getting excited. Okay, great. I'm loving all the stamps that are coming through. Yes. <laughs> okay, so if you still haven't been able to get it, um, maybe just if you want to type in chat using the names that you see up on the annotation screen, I think that's a workaround. Okay, I'm going to clear your annotations. Okay, we're gonna go to the first one. Okay, so one more time. Which one would you use when you're feeling happy? Oh my gosh. 
There we go. Okay. I'm going to clear these annotations so we can move right along. We've got Smiling Face as our clear winner. What about when you're feeling sick? I've actually never seen Nauseated Face uh, do this well. Fantastic. Maybe because uh, people are maybe a little face masked out at this point in the world. Okay, we'll go do the next one. When you're feeling hungry, we've got dumpling, which was approved fairly recently in 2017, and hamburger, um, which was 2015, um, but was modified in 2018 so that the cheese would be in a more logical place. Neither, also completely valid. I think neither here, neither here is one. Um, if you feel in chat, if you wanna share what you would use instead, please feel free, no, no requirements though. Okay, we'll go to the next one. And what about if you wanna describe a head covering? A little nod to the proposal that we saw in the video. For one, I've never in my whole life used the, um, you know, dainty bonnet <laughs> that was in one of the emo original emojis. Um, I see we've got one person, no, no hate on the bonnet, neither. That's also fair. I think there's some other options. Okay. So, right, you know, I don't know if you ever see those stories that come out about um, emoji that are get that get released. Like there's a lot of emoji out right now. Thank goodness for that emoji search because the emoji keyboard is so big, but there is like, there's growing diversity in that keyboard. Um, and um, though we will be talking about how you can draft your own emoji proposals today, um, I just want to say there is a little bit of slowing down with the amount of emojis that are getting approved each cycle, um, but they are still kind of actively reviewing them and modifying them through the, the Unicode Consortium. So if you're able to right now, just quickly go ahead and turn off that annotation. Um, I'm happy to see stars and hearts as we go along, but um, if we could just turn that off, it'd be you know, a little helpful too. Okay. So, oh, I forgot this one. Well, I forgot this was here. This is what happens in presenter mode. <laughs> um, I liked to add this one because I was really excited to see the disco ball um, come up. But we'll go ahead and skip it for now to move ahead. Okay, so this is all to get us to the thinking about like what emoji do we wish existed? There's four mailboxes. There's at least four um, images of the world. There's a lot of new character emojis and object emojis, but has there ever, ever been a time um, when you're communicating with someone that you're like, where is this emoji? Like I could have sworn it existed. Um, if you have something in your mind, um, feel free to share it with us in chat. Um, I will also be putting in to chat a document from Unicode which is the official list of emoji requests. I'm gonna share my screen. This is the page. So these are all of the emojis that have been submitted to Unicode and the frequency, how they've been um, kind of put on hold, approved or flat out denied. Everything in green is approved, red is denied. Um, and just because it's red on this list doesn't mean it's never going to be an emoji. Um, it just means maybe um, like a well-formed proposal wasn't submitted or wasn't submitted the right way. Um, a lot of the times there are these like, um, what is that site where like people can sign a petition asking like Apple for a new emoji? Um, those things don't really get emojis made for one because Apple doesn't make emojis, it's Unicode, but because um, Unicode actually requires these like pretty detailed proposals. Um, so one of my, oops, one of my uh, great defeats in my life was this proposal here for long sandwich. Um, it is my proudest proposal to date and it got declined and I am still one day hoping that I can resubmit and have them um, approve this emoji because it was, it was, a, it was a delight and I'll, I'll share it with you later. So uh, let's see. Has anybody, if you, ukulele? Oh yeah, ukulele was des denied twice. Woman dancing. Um, flute, it's flute on here. Mm, 
it's maybe I would say flutes a maybe. Rachel, I think if you want to if you want to consider doing that one, it looks like it, it it's a possibility. Um, but you can absolutely use this as inspiration if you're you know thinking about an emoji you want to start drafting today. Okay, so if you've got an emoji that you would like to see become an emoji. Um, we're just gonna do a couple of activities just to see exactly what this emoji proposal entails. Um, in the description for today's workshop, um, it said, you know, you can absolutely like modify this for students. Um, primarily today we're having fun, but I have done a version of this workshop for uh, students for a summer program we have here at Yale called Yale Young Global Scholars. Um, where it's high school students who are doing like a summer like pre Yale program um, and getting kind of like a broad experience and this is one of their electives. Um, and so I do this right I talk about you know data collection and um, you know crafting an argument and you know adding you know a personal slant on it. Um, in the context of like research skills. And so that's what I do with students. Today, we will be looking at a couple of different sections in the proposal because it's extremely long. <laughs> we'll be looking at um, images, frequency, sequences. And then if we've got time, we'll write a sentence or two of an abstract because it really is about convincing the Unicode body that like you are passionate about this emoji and that other people are going to use it. Um, and then author biographies because I think that one's fun. So you'll be working in Google Drive. I'm going to drop that link into chat right now. Oh my gosh, chicken nugget. I think the hard thing about chicken nugget, Lois, is the representation. And I'm, we'll talk about that in a minute. Because um, you have to also think about emoji scale. But I would just, I had chicken nuggets yesterday. I would just love to see a chicken nugget emoji. Uh, kazoo, person reading. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so go ahead and um, in chat, access this Google Drive folder and you should be seeing this. So just to give a little bit of show and tell through this folder, um, I've got some example proposals in here. Everything that's a PDF has been approved and you can actually find them just on the open web um, hosted by Unicode, all the approved appro uh, proposals. Um, here's the headscarf emoji. That was mentioned um, in the um, video trailer. This was submitted by an actual high school student, which is really amazing. Um, back in 2016, here's the sloth proposal that I wrote with my now good friend Bodo, who lives in Germany. Um, we've never met in person. We tried to um, get his family and my family together, but then the pandemic happened. And so, just to give you a sense of like what these proposals look like is we've got some draft images, an introduction, we've got some explanatory text with citations, there's no, you know, citation format requirement, data, and there's some required data in proposals and there's some optional data, really what you can include to help kind of bolster your argument. Google Trends is a big one and we'll look at that over the next, you know, 45 or so minutes. And then they have all these different categories for how you're going to prove to them that your emoji is going to get used. Um, how can it get used in multiple ways? How will the image be distinct, which I think might be a problem that Chicken Nugget is having? Um, does it complete a set? Does Is a fifth mailbox needed and you're writing the proposal for that fifth mailbox? Um, is it requested like on Twitter all the time? You can add that here. It's a right. These things are long. And then we've got author bios here at the bottom. And Jennifer Aitley actually joined us on this one to help us make sure it got approved, which was so nice of her and it did get approved. So I've also got in here my long sandwich proposal, which just the tragedy of my life. Um, I loved it so much. So feel free to read these if you've got some time between meetings <laughs> later on. They're there also to help you as a reference. So the other thing I have for you in here in the template folder is hopefully everybody's name. Hopefully you can find your name in here. <laughs> if you don't see your name, it is listed in alphabetical order by first name. I just did first names. Um, if you don't see your name, you can always right click 
on that first one labeled one and then make a copy and that can be your dedicated file. So if you've got emoji you want to kind of go through and draft right now, this is where you can start doing it. So I'm just going to open the kind of sample one without anyone's name on it to show you around. And I didn't do any of this highlighting. So if you've ever like done any kind of like template document drafting as part of a job, like I used to work for a publisher and this is how all the library contracts looked like. Um, everything in yellow essentially you, is a direction or things that you delete. I'm just going to change the view on my screen really quickly. Um, so what we're going to do is everything in your document that I've also highlighted in blue. That was an addition by me so we can find these sections hopefully easier. So the biggest thing is emoji names are always in capital letters. So today I'm going to do mild panic. And once I've got it, I'm going to go ahead and remove that highlighting because it's set. And then write your name and your affiliation is really important. In this case, I'm affiliated with Emoji Nation, so I would write Emoji Nation here. And then, of course, write your date, housekeeping stuff. Um, so the next thing that we will look at, um, and I'll guide you through this um, in just a minute, is images. And then if you keep scrolling, you'll see more things in blue for the pieces that we'll look at. But right, you can kind of see the similarities and the differences from that approved proposal to this template that is wild and all in yellow <laughs> with all of these examples. And they update it pretty frequently. You can see at the top. Okay, has everybody been able to access the Google Drive folder who's interested? Yeah, Jenny, if you are interested in a long list of long sandwiches, my long sandwich emoji, emoji proposal is the place to go. It's like a definitive list of possible long sandwiches. Okay, awesome. So the first part that we're going to do together is images. And so um, as you saw in the template proposal and in the template that's hopefully open at your computer, um, there are kind of suggested um, designs that happen. Unicode then goes and makes their own emoji. Um, I don't know how they do it, but we make a suggestion, right? It should be in profile, it should be head on, it should be overhead, one arm should be up. Um, and in Emoji Nation, we work with a designer who does the official drawings, but today we don't have our designer. And so I just want to kind of get a sense. If you've got an emoji you want to work on, can you pick up a pencil and paper on your desk and like sketch it out really quick? Like, what should it look like? What do you want to convey to Unicode that should exist as an emoji? There's also other things like the emoji generator, the noun project, and Vecteasy, um, or you know, copyright-free Google images. Um, oh, flat icon, that's a good addition. Thanks, Maggie. I just put a couple of other links in the chat. And let's just take, I don't know, two, three minutes to look around the internet and find an image. Um, if you find one and you've got a link for it, please um, put it in chat so other folks can see kind of where you're headed. Oh my gosh, guillotine. So I'm gonna stop sharing screen so that you can look at your own internet a little bit easier. And I'm gonna play a little bit of music.
Okay, take maybe 20 or 30 more seconds just to keep looking around. Okay. I saw some good images come through chat. Um, and I saw some, some heated, there's no microwave emoji. And there hasn't even been a rejected proposal. So I think, you know, when you start feeling that passion that something's missing, I think that's a good sign that maybe there should be an emoji. Um, so that's really awesome. Let's see, there should be a dinosaur emoji. Deodorant. <laughs> I love this. This is so great. So just to um to kind of give you an example of how this happens. So I'm still working in that template. And so I took um a screenshot that could be mild panic and I just dropped it right here into the document. Um when you're working with a designer, it might start out this way and then it gets swapped with the official images. In this case, I'm just going to show you an example. This is the Emoji Nation website where you can see kind of a visual representation of some of the emojis that they're working on and how the images kind of take form. So in this case, we've got beach ball was suggested by someone and someone provided some sample images of how they wanted their beach ball to look. And then here's kind of the pomegranate, which has been kind of officially rendered by the designer. Um, and then right here's the mild panic that I just went in here and I saw it was ready to assign which means it's available for me to write. And I just took a screenshot of it and put it into my proposal. So, right, if you wanna take a screenshot of that microwave and drop it right into your, your proposal, they need a big image and a little image. And that is because, let's see. Um, Unicode, one of the things is like scale. So they're high res images kind of by default, but then they, they get shrunk onto our keyboards. You can make them giant on your desktop top computer. I will just share with you a couple of examples of when this image size became a problem. Um, the first one is for falafel. It got rejected a lot, not because it was a bad proposal, but because they were really trying to refine how it would look at scale. How many falafel balls should it be? It had to be somewhere between three and five, no more, no less. Couple of reasons in there that I will let you figure out. The other issue that kept getting rejected was uh, needle and thread, because um, as you can see at scale, it is like a, a line. <laughs> it's like two lines. Um, at one point it looked like a sword and so it kept getting rejected. Um, and this one was actually from a professor of mine at the CUNY Graduate Center who got this one finally approved. So way to go, Amanda. So that's why they like to see the different scales. Okay, so the next biggest thing that Unicode considers is frequency. So they want to make sure that these emojis are going to get used um, and that we're not just kind of needlessly adding every possible word um, that exists exists on earth <laughs> to the emoji keyboard. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a couple of minutes. And so there's a number of different um, things that Unicode requires, and that is optional. The biggest thing that they require is for all of your like open web documentation is they want to see it compared to a constant. So in Google Trends, in Bing, in YouTube searches, on Instagram, um, all these different places where they want to see data from, they want to see it compared to elephant. 
which <laughs> did not used to be the case. Like when I wrote the sloth proposal, we compare it to anything else that was already emoji that was similar. And so we compared sloth to snail, which made sense to us. But now they want us to kind of employ more of the scientific method, another talking point for students. And, you know, if you think like, oh, I have to demonstrate that like a needle and thread is anywhere similar to an elephant feels frustrating sometimes, <laughs> but it's just something that has to be done. Emoji also, or Unicode also has their own kind of frequency documentation. So if you ever see like BuzzFeed release that article at the end of the year that talks about the most used emoji, they're actually just pulling that data from Unicode itself. And I'll put this website in chat. So you can go see actual emoji use frequency here from Unicode. That's pretty cool. Okay, so for proposals, what we have to do is the required data is to show how often your emoji comes up in a Google and Bing search. I guess people use Bing. I don't. <laughs> um, they want to see how often it comes up in a Google video search slash YouTube. Um, but what we're going to look at today that I think can be a useful talking point for students is Google Trends for web, for web searches and for image searches. Google Trends is a pretty cool tool and it mimics a lot of the things that, you know, databases use that you need to make sure these filters are applied to get the right results. Um, and so if you've got a one or two, you know, one or two words that can describe the emoji that you're working on, I'm going to send you over here to Google Trends and I'm going to put the link to that in chat as well. I'm not going to make you guess it. I am looking for my chat button. It just disappeared on me. You know when that like toolbar disappears and you're in the middle of presenting and you can't get it back. Could I get someone who does have their chat bar to Google Google Trends for me and to put it in chat while I try to surface my chat icon? Oh wait, here we go. Okay, it's back. Oof. All right, now we've all got a link to Google Trends. So when I do this, right, if I'm doing mild panic, um, I think in this case, I would just use panic. Like I might suggest to my students, start with the more general term and run my search. But then once I get here, um, I need to double check a couple of things so that Unicode doesn't reject my proposal immediately because I pulled the data wrong, which they do, <laughs> they do all the time. So it needs to make sure, you need to make sure that your emoji term is the search term. So the broader option versus like the topic. And then when you add your comparison, you're gonna see that it can come up as a topic, an animal, just make sure it matches. So both are the search term category. The next thing is, is there a, right there a global consortium? And so you need to switch United States to worldwide and past 12 months to the longest time range that they give you. In this case, it's 2004 to present. And then for the first data collection, you're gonna keep it at web search. And for the second data collection, you're gonna switch it to image search. And so this is pretty cool, right? Um, the only thing that you need to pay attention to is your key doesn't show up here until you hover. And so when you include this data um, in your proposal, essentially what you do is you take a screenshot. And so you need to include the top search as well. I don't know if you'll be able to see my screenshot icon in Zoom, but this is, this is what I take a screenshot of to then copy into my proposal. If I'm feeling really ambitious, I'll then, you know, scroll down and like try to make the argument, right? Like, let's say it's super high for elephant in the United States, but like panic is showing up higher somewhere else in the world. So I might be able to add some explanatory text in my proposal that says like, while elephant is showing more popular overall, the emoji that I'm proposing is actually showing a higher rate in other parts of the world, you know, and try to kind of win them over with, um, with argument instead of just the top level data. And then I'll take a screenshot of this and include it in my proposal. 
Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do kind of within their like very strict requirements for Unicode. Okay, any questions about Google Trends data? I can't see everyone's face at once. So let's just take another, I think, you know, we work in libraries here. Let's take two minutes <laughs> and see how far we can get doing your proposed emoji as a web search and image search and grabbing some screenshots here in Google Trends. And while you do that, I'll just play another emoji song. Okay, take like 20, 30 more seconds and then we'll come back. All right. Hi, everybody. So I just took some screen, screen grabs too in the proposal I'm working in. Um, and so I've got my web search here and then I've got my image search here and I just dropped them into the Google Doc. Um, I believe I'm like halfway down the proposal if you're looking for where this goes. It comes right after all of like the, the Google um, searches. You can also do a browser find in your doc for the word frequency and then start scrolling just so you don't miss it. Um, so there are some other things that are fun, like if you're doing something like book related, like I saw, you know, maybe someone was doing like a student reading or maybe you're doing um, maybe something that would come up a lot in Google Books. Um, you do have the option to doing a similar search in Google Ngram to demonstrate that frequency. But again, you do have to add that elephant <laughs> comparison pretty much with everything. Um, and then you can also pull from social media, Wikipedia, all kinds of things. All right. 
So the next thing that we're going to do is uh, talk about use in sequences. So um, we're not just talking about right replicating every possible object or phrase um, that exists in the world. It's how you can combine them. There's a couple of different ways that emojis get combined, right? It's to create sayings with multiple emojis on a keyboard, or I believe the phrase for the data that makes it is like ZYX, XYZ, something like that, which is how kind of the, in like for the Unicode, Unicode te technical backend, how different emojis get combined to create different options. So for instance, when emoji released the, the new kind of toggle options for hair color and skin tone, that was technically a sequence in the back end where they applied a color to existing emoji. What we're going to talk about is uh, using emojis to create phrases. And so I've got, I think, four or five examples of things that phrases, movies, and sayings um, made out of emoji. And we're just going to take a couple of minutes. If you can guess what they are, go ahead and put them in chat. Peter Pan. Yes, Sam and Rachel, you are correct. Eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. Ginny and Sam, you are correct. Oh, and Melody. It's a long one to type. The, the one before. Yes, Silence of the Lambs. Maybe I need to make these harder next time. Yep, Rachel, you got it, Breakfast Club. I was actually going over my slides because these are the a version of the slides I used with my summer students. And um, I was staring at this one and I forgot to put a note and I was like, what is this? <laughs> And I swear to you, for like 15 minutes the other day, I was like, I cannot remember what this one was. <laughs> this one might be the last one. There might be one more. And this one's a phrase or a saying. Yes, I believe in you or I believe you. Yeah, I'll take either. For Ann and for Jenny. Awesome. Let's see. Do I have one more? Yes, I do. I might have another after this. Yeah, when pigs fly. Totally. Okay. So that was the last of my sequence examples. Um, if you thought that was fun, there's like all kinds of, again, like BuzzFeed articles um, describing some sequences, where it's, which is where I got some of them. Um, awesome, Terry. You got it too. So in your proposal, if you, again, if you do a browser find for sequence, or if you just keep scrolling a little bit, it asks for um, how your emoji can be used in different ways. Um, it also asks for use in sequences. Um, it's possible that your emoji can't be used in a sequence, and that doesn't mean it can't be an emoji. It is something that's not required of every emoji proposal. Um, I think it's kind of a fun exercise to try to come up with them. And so here's the example of what I put in for my ladder proposal. And I think I, I took it like a little far. I was like, I got like very specific <laughs> with what you could use a ladder for. But I think everything that I used in the sequences, I kind of tied back to kind of the bulk of my um, introduction text to really kind of demonstrate the different options and kind of bring that home for the consortium. Um, if you've got an emoji like if you can't think of a, multi a sequence for like microwave, um, there's also um, a, a portion of your proposal called breaking new ground, where you could write a couple of sentences, sentences to say like, hey, we've got all these other cooking emoji and, you know, microwaves are used a lot in certain cultures or certain regions of the world to cook food, just like you might cook food in this way somewhere else. Like you could say that instead of sequences. <laughs> um, so um, I just wanna take, um, you know, let's take two more minutes because um, it's already 2.47 and just think about um, either a couple of sequences you might use for your emoji 
or a way in which your emoji might be breaking new ground. And I will, and they're used a lot in my kitchen too. I will play a little bit more music while you think about those things. She had them in my life, but she also had them there. And the first song, Shuffle Ball, when the two babies are regularly irresistible, the next time the water in her room. And so I hear the bag with the head family he takes. I said, I know why. She said, I'm going to be So I said, I love you. That's what I was true. Far high, I think I don't know the name of I know that I'll be trying to it's empty without you, and I a little thing to do. Oh, 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 get it all without your toes, Jay. Just has come my way, that you don't believe why. Six back here on her room. I said, you are a desperate. So she sent a smile on her face. So I sent her back on her. And she sent me back. So I sent her quite the part. She takes me even without you, babe. Our eyes, smiling face, and her family. Oh, hello, well. Okay, hi everybody. Start my video again. Um, I did a little bit of thinking about how mild panic might play out in sequences. Um, maybe mild panic in like the, the chart that's going down. Cause there's the two charts, there's the up and the down. Maybe like, maybe I'm a business person. Maybe I'm worried about my database stats and I'm panicking. Uh, mild panic in a hundred, maybe school grading. Mild panic and heart, like I'm telling my friend Maggie that I just revealed to my crush that I like them and I'm freaking out. Um, so just some, um, just some, <laughs> I'm loving the chat right now. <laughs> Thank you all <laughs> for being so engaged in this. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different options, um, but you know, maybe you chose to write breaking new ground. Um, it's really, um, what you want to do right now is up to you. So um, the next parts that I wanted us to think about, and I think maybe we'll combine this into one, like have you picked that maybe you want to think about more depending on some of the things that have happened in chat or that maybe you've seen happening in the data or your personal feelings on this emoji, whether it's nerd peach or frying pan, microwave, whatever it may be. Um, talk to me um, or talk to Unicode about your proposal. Um, I, you know, kind of like I tell my students, I like to collect all my data first that Unicode requires. So, you know, like the student that shows up in your office and says, like, I need to find this very specific article that says this very specific thing for my very specific thesis. Um, I try to roll them back a little bit and let them, you know, follow the data and follow the evidence in the literature. Um, I do the same for my proposals. So I do my abstract introduction last. And then at the very end, I do my author bio to kind of like tie the whole thing together into a nice little package. 
because it is essentially a research paper, um, just a very specifically formatted one. So, um, and you're more than welcome in, during this time to write, or maybe you wanna go through some of the examples and see what the abstracts look like for some of the proposals I put into Google Drive. But um, this is really your chance to, you know, remind Unicode that you are a person um, and that, you know, everything kind of has its purpose. So for Skunk, we really focused on um, completing the series for um, wildlife in South America. Um, but I also tried to um, like add a, add a narrative that like a skunk is kind of uh, used in comedy and all these other things. Um, and it's funny for fart jokes. I think that was in there too. <laughs> um, really, there you there's there's nothing you can't include in these emoji proposals, <laughs> as long as you know you connect to it. Somebody else will. So you know, maybe just take um, a couple of minutes. I, I think right now, either think about your abstract or read some abstracts, or think about your author bios. Um, and kind of like you know, I consider this kind of an extension of the abstract or that longer text. Um, and I always kind of connect it. I always change my author bio based on the proposal. So here, um, my bio for ladder, uh, Kelly Blanchett is a librarian. She uses social media to scaffold a type of ladder, learning outcomes for information retrieval and using information in socially conscious ways. She's 5'3" and needs a ladder to clean the top of her refrigerator and to water her hard to reach plants, um, right? And then my friend Bodo for Sloth talked about his like paternity leave sabbatical and um, so right, just kind of reconnecting. So let's just take, um, say no, it's 2.54. Let's take two more minutes and read and write some ideas and I'll play the last song.
Okay, so I know that is not nearly enough time to craft something like heartfelt, <laughs> um, but hopefully um, you've gotten a sense of, right, what it takes to actually create an emoji proposal. Um, and maybe you feel inspired to finish your proposal or convince somebody in your life to um, write their own proposal and do it without one of those um, like petitions on the internet to actually go out and write their proposal. I did just take a second um, during this break to write my author biography for Mild Panic. Uh, Kelly Blanchett is an emoji lover who felt some mild panic when she couldn't find the chat Zoom button earlier. Thank you for attending today's session. I can't wait to use, oh, I can't wait to microwave a nerd peach in a microwave, you know, it's not perfect, while watching a student reading about guillotine use in popular media. Um, you know, this is also to say um, emoji proposals aren't perfect. If you go through and read one of mine, um, they uh, were not submitted for a grade or to a professor or anything. So don't be too harsh, but, you know, maybe you can, you know, find something funny in there or inspiring um, to, you know, make you smile. Um, thank you all for being here. Yeah, thanks, Kelly. Um, like people are giving you a lot of praise in the chat. It was great. Awesome. Um, I like what Jenny said. It was mood boosting. Uh, it's Yay. very gray here in Greensboro, uh, North Carolina. Uh, yeah, same like I, New Haven's gray. Um, always, right? Not so um, always. Not always. <laughs> yes, I, yes. I went to um, school up north, so I mm -hmm. did visit New Haven. So same, same. But, Thank you for coming, um, everyone. Thank you again, Kelly. Uh, I think you might be our first guest speaker outside of you. Am I wrong? Awesome. Jenny Jenny has more of an institutional knowledge than I do. Yeah, we had someone present with Melody yes. back in the day, but that was like really early in it. So it has been a long time. It's been a while. Okay, great. Well, thank yeah. you again, Kelly. I dropped in the chat at one point the ULVLC um, oh. live guide. Uh, Kelly, oh, cool. you're welcome to look at it and see oh, yeah. what we've done in the past. Um, but uh, just to remind people here at UNCG that Jenny will be leading a reflection session um, in uh, not this Friday, but the next, right, Jenny? Am I right? That's um, right. So, and so be on the lookout for that, but you can also, um, I'm, people are already signing up for it. So sign up and you'll get an email from Jenny the morning of, um, and then be on the lookout for some stuff coming up in January. Uh, we do have one in January coming up um, from Alicia Webb at GTCC is going to do a QA and a about her experience with Microsoft. Um, they have only Microsoft, which is where we're about to go, Kelly. Um, we're, we're super hyped. <laughs> JK, we're not. Um, I don't know. We won't even be able to have Zoom anymore. Teams no for Zoom, everything. No Google, no Box. Uh, Microsoft, everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's right. Wow. Um, but y'all yeah. sign up and uh, things ask, are great uh, in North Carolina. Yeah, yeah a big panic. Mild <laughs> panic right. is mild. not correct for that one. Big panic. <laughs> is there a pissed emoji? Big panic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, salt emoji, like crying emoji, <laughs> salty <laughs> crying, um, anger emoji. Um, yeah, Rachel's doing a good job with emojis. Everyone, great. So y'all come out and ask um, Alicia questions. I know a lot of y'all know her from um, NCLA. She's really great. Um, and she's very gracious to let us like just ask her questions and uh, feel our feelings and, you know, ask her things. So um, thanks y'all. Um, everyone have a great day. Sorry, I kept you a little bit past three, Kelly. Um, thank yeah. you so much again. And the Bye Google Drive folder is going to stay there for you all if you want to access it anytime later. Yeah, and I would remind you all as people are leaving, um, make a copy too, uh, just to yeah. uh, have it for yourself and keep working on it. <laughs> okay, bye everyone. Bye everyone. Thank you, Kelly. Bye, yeah, thanks, Kelly. So